Yo, what up guys? Welcome to Jack's Off to another adventure. So growing up in the US, I didn't really learn much about Chinese American history until I became a Chinatown enthusiast. In class, I don't remember much except that, you know, they taught us that they, Chinese people came here, mined for gold, and built a railroad. As for gold mining, we've already driven up Highway 49 and visited some of the old gold mining towns and we saw some Chinese American history. As for the railroad, I remember that the Union Pacific started in Omaha, Nebraska, went west, and the Central Pacific started in Sacramento and went east and met up in Promontory, Utah. Well, right now we are in Denver, which is not too far from Promontory, so we're gonna take a trip to the spot where they met up. And also I heard that in Salt Lake City, there's a Chinatown, or well, kind of. So, if you want to learn more about Chinese American history in this region of the country, then join me as Jack Soft to Salt Lake City. Let's go! And joining me today on this trip is Chinatown enthusiast Tree Fitty. And right now we are going to take a train from Denver to Salt Lake City via Amtrak. Ladies first. Thank you. Ladies first. <laughs> And here it is guys, Union Station here in Denver. So y'all know I'm a Chinatown enthusiast already, but if you watch some of my older videos, y'all should know I'm a train riding enthusiast as well. And today we are taking the California Zephyr Amtrak train. Um, it goes all the way from Chicago to Emeryville, but because of circumstances, we're only riding from Denver to Salt Lake City. And I heard it's going to be a beautiful ride crossing the Rocky Mountains. And here's our train right here. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the room met. We're going to take peasant class. That car is downstairs in that car. Hello, guys. You're making announcements over your stuff where no one is going to understand. So can someone just make one announcement and then so for those of you who have never been on an Amtrak train, even here in peasant class, check out the leg room here. This is Tree Fitty with the MBA height of 6 foot. Look at that leg space right here. Wow. And of course, the views. You got more train riding enthusiasts. And more views. We're going to get a lot of these views on our way to Salt Lake City, guys. So like the other Amtrak trains we took, there's also an observation deck, they call it, or the lounge. You get the sky roof and a much bigger window for views. Yeah. <laughs> Top model of Amtrak right here. <laughs> Alright, so we got a little break here in Grand Juncture. Check this out, guys.
All right, so after a 15 hour train ride, I find myself in the hotel for the night, the Holiday Inn Express here in downtown Salt Lake City. Let's do a quick tour of this place here. The bathroom, and you got, oh my God, you guys seeing this guys? Holy, wow. You got the toilet, and check this out. This is like five, six feet of leg room. Wow, you got a lot of leg space. Check it out guys. So this is the toilet. Here's the view when you're doing your business. All oh, the open space, the open concept, how you think. Helps you ease your mind, helps you with everything here in the bathroom. And it's really clean too, so that helps. And over here, we have like a kitchenette. You got a microwave. Here's a fridge and no water. Boo! Here's where I'm staying at. And check out the design, the furniture. Very modern looking, very sleek, very clean. You got a working chair, you got a sofa, and this is where the magic of recovery happens. And since we're in Salt Lake City, are we gonna find the Book of Mormon? No. Um, Jesus? Are you here? No, Jesus, no way. No, they don't even have a Bible or anything. Not even, wow, wow. All right, guys, it's been a really long day. Let's get some rest before we continue on with this adventure. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, guys. So right now we're heading to the Golden Spike National Historic Sites. It's about an hour and a half away from Salt Lake City. And check it out. Here's the roads heading there. One reason why I like traveling to these like weird spots, you get these rare views of the country you don't really see in San Francisco. Check it out. This is Utah, guys. Woo! Ooh, so after about an hour and a half of driving, made it. Check it out. Here it is. The visitor center for the Golden Spike National Historic Park. Right, let's go check it out. So this is the famous picture that was taken after the last spike. And check it out. None of these folks were Chinese. Maybe this guy. I can't tell, but supposedly none of them were in this picture though. Which is a huge issue because they actually contributed a whole bunch to it. And here we have an exhibit for the Chinese railroad workers. Check it out. They used to stay at tents because they didn't have very good accommodation. They had these jars, soy sauce jars, because you know we needed that flavor. You had coins. Wow. You had medicine bottles, traditions maintained. They actually drank a lot of tea. They would boil water keep them healthy so they can work longer, you know, Chinese work ethics. Without them, it would be impossible. And then here you have some game pieces. You know what? Coins, game pieces. I Man, I'm sure they were gambling back then too. So I don't remember this, but the completion was in 1869. What a nice year to finish. And check it out, they're having some kind of a ceremony. So for the Central Pacific that spanned from Sacramento to here, Palmatory, the majority of the very dangerous work were done by Chinese. And yet when you look at the final picture that was taken on the Golden Spike, none of the Chinese were in the picture. 
they were sort of neglected and forgotten. But check it out, over here, we have a plaque dedicated to the Chinese railroad workers. So the last plaque that connected the two railroads, right here in the middle between those two trains. The Chinese labor force for the Central Pacific comprised some 90% of their employees that built this project. Without their contribution, this western part of the line probably would not have been completed in the time it was. And so that was a huge accomplishment. So we are here right now. We're trying to get to the Chinese arch. Let's go. When the railroad companies were looking into hiring the Chinese, they were actually very skeptical at first because the Chinese were small in stature, so they weren't sure whether they're strong enough to build the railroad. So in the very beginning, they hired like 10, 15 Chinese. It would increase every year. And then they realized, you know, the Chinese people, they were hardworking. They did all the dangerous work. They were blowing up tunnels. A lot of them actually died, but they realized that the Chinese people can get the work done. So they hired more and more and more to a point where they had more than 9,000 Chinese workers, more like 10 to 15,000. And without the Chinese, the railroad might not have been built. At the very least, it would have been delayed. So the Chinese model, delay no more. <laughs> and even though none of the Chinese were in the pictures, nowadays you have an arch that's dedicated to them. Check it out. The Chinese arch, guys. So before heading back to Salt Lake City and looking for that Chinatown, right now we're in Ogden because there used to be a Chinatown here too. No longer here anymore. Check it out. This is the historic 25th Street. That's Union Station down there. And we're gonna look for some old remnants of Chinatown here. Let's go. So the reason why we're here on 25th Street is because for this website, I found a few old Chinese laundromats. So Samwa, 271 25th 271 25th now it's a wise guys live comedy not as funny as 269 though <laughs> this should be the comedy club but check it out guys this used to be an old laundromat old chinese laundromat over here so at 229 it would have been wan li but over here it says 227 so 229 would have been here I guess they converted that into a parking lot nowadays. I don't know what the relationship between Ogden and horses are, but you see a horse over here. You have another Coca-Cola horse over there. There's like horses on every corner of this block. And then over here, you have the Raging Stallion. Whew. And one more down here, Su Wa, one, two, three. One, two, three. So now it's a lavender. I don't know what kind of store this is. It used to be a Chinese laundromat. And you know what? I'm sure back then around this area, it wasn't just laundromats. There's probably like Chinese grocery stores, zafo pos, hotels, whatnot. Over here in old Chinatown that no longer exists in Ogden. So as we're walking down here, we came across this bulletin board. Check it out real quick. 164 to 168 used to be a Japanese restaurant and now it became the Windsor Hotel. So that right there, the Windsor Hotel, that brick, orange brick building, used to be Japanese restaurants. Well, well, well guys, check out what's behind me. <laughs> Salt Lake City's Chinatown right here. Zhong Gok Sing, Zhong Guo Chen. Let's take a quick look of this. Paifong, or Paifong real quick. It's basically like paintings and then you have the embedded Chinatown right here. And in the background, you have the mountains of Utah. Too bad it's not like snowing right now. That would be beautiful. But even so with this backdrop though, wow. I love 
this Pai Fong so far. This might be my favorite one so far. It's huge, has a nice backdrop. And as for Chinatown, it's more like a plaza. So, I guess we're gonna eat first and then go walk around inside, see what's in Salt Lake City's Chinatown. Well, let's just go inside. So it's not just like a... Oh, wait, 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 wait. San Fran burritos and fries? Wait a minute. So it's not just like a Chinese shop. They also have like all sorts of other Asian stuff too. Chinatown Market. Wanna go in there first? Oh, let's check out what they have here that we don't have in the Bay Area. Already? I've never seen these before. Wow. Soy pudding. Damn. It's for size reference, here's tree fitties. Size reference. Damn. Fat Buddha. So you get your Asian potteries. This is where moms get their weapons. And rice cookers, that's legit. Oh, <laughs> they have Yum Seeds here. This place is legit, it's a legit Chinatown. Oh, what? Huh. I check it out, they have a whole duck here with the head too, this is legit. They got some legit stuff, wow. Okay, I'm impressed by the Chinatown. Yo, they probably have more stuff than we have in the Bay, dude. These pajoys. I am very curious about all these, dude. Dude, what the hell? Do they have sriracha, though? Oh, Aw, but sriracha, sriracha. Oh, they don't, but they have the elephant one. They have three mian, dragon, happy elephant. So they don't have the actual cock sauce. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Remember earlier at the Golden Spike, I was mentioning him that the historic picture did not have any Chinese in here? Well, I guess in 2014, they came back and we can see some Chinese faces. Wow. This guy's gonna be a training engineer. This guy's gonna be a doctor. This girl behind her, the lawyer. Wow. More Chinese uncle, proud Chinese uncles. Making it right. Nice. That's gonna be me in 30 years. <laughs> and then you have very happy Chinese aunties over here. We're going to Great Wall Restaurants. Anywhere we like. Thank you. Man, that food was satisfying. I was not disappointed by this Chinatown. I am content. But yeah, in terms of this Chinatown, I didn't really show you earlier, but there's a Korean restaurant over yonder. And then you have some pho, some noodles. And that's about it. Well, guys, our journey ends here in Salt Lake City's Chinatown. You know, it's a fun train ride from Denver to Salt Lake City. And then we got to see some old trains and history from the Chinese railway workers. And then at last, we have this beautiful Chinatown gate. And maybe one day I'll come back here when there's snow, because this is beautiful. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Till next time, Jack's off.